The Koshan 555 Culinary Tour landed on Hawaii Island this weekend here at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. Now in its fifth year, the tour was founded by Brady Lowe as a traveling tasting event created to promote the sustainable farming of heritage breed pigs. Quick orientation. We have five chefs up here, a thousand pounds of pig, about three to four dishes per chef, something to work your way through all the way. So you have station one, two, three, four, five. Five pigs, five heritage pigs, five chefs, five winemakers. And basically five chefs go at it head to tail with uh, five pigs that are basically heritage pigs. So they're Yorkshire, they're, they're Herefords, they're Berkshires, they're Red Waddles. So they have a breed line that, that traces back generations. Hawaiian seafood auction, big eye tuna. Tartar. Um, it's been going on for just just hit its five year mark. It's been a, sort of a great resurgence for the small pig farmer. Fruit bar. The Mauna Kea Beach Hotel's executive chef, Peter Pock, was pivotal in bringing the tasty tour to the big island. This happened kind of serendipitously. I, I called him in April, asked him if he could fit uh, Mauna Kea Beach Hotel into his schedule, the coach show and tour. And he did. This is the end of the uh, tour, um, so it's non-competitive. Well, most of the, the events that Brady has is a competition, but since the competition is uh, quote-unquote over, um, this is just a fun event celebrating both heritage and feral pigs. Five chef teams came to the Kohala Coast for the event on Saturday. Besides Chef Pak, there was Bistro's Molokini's Chef Michael Young, Pili Hawaii's Chef Mark Noguchi, town and uptown event chef Ed Kenny, and celebrity chef Lee Ann Wong. You know, I was with Brady in Aspen last year for Koshone. I said, why don't you come to Hawaii? It's great. He's like, oh, Peter did the first Koshone with me. And I was like, oh, perfect. So over the past year, we've worked on getting Koshone here to Hawaii. The tour was a learning experience for the visiting chefs, as Pak explained. What, what is cool for, for Brady is that he learned so much about an insular and, and fragile environmental place that the Hawaiian Islands are. It's, it's, it's a, a whole different creature, so he learned how, how hard it is to do heritage pigs, how hard it is for farmers to deal with fer feral pigs and make it work. You know, it's a very different state of, that we don't have a huge variety of heritage breeds here, but Hawaii, as we know it, is a state, everybody loves pork, you know, so it's about starting the conversation. It's about really talking about what is available here, how we can raise the animals responsibly, how the, how there we can create a demand for whole animal butchery versus importing parts parts of pigs from the mainland. There was plenty for the pork enthusiasts to enjoy. Food aficionados could even witness the butchering of an entire Hereford. We have a Hereford pig, which is a very rare heritage breed pig, and you don't know how lucky we are to have it here tonight. Daphne and Ron are here, the farmers, along with uh, Chef Devin Lauder, who did the cured meats. It's a pop-up butcher shop, so basically everything on that that pig is for sale to take home with. We'll make sure it's cold, you can come pick it up before you leave. 100% of the proceeds goes to the culinary school, helping here today. So let's put our hands together for them. Ten students here who decided to give a hand for a good food cause. So as we start breaking all these down, that's when we'll start selling them as we break them down. Uh, right now we got the head, you know, if anyone's interested in the head. Makes a wonderful soup. We make a great pate out of it. Um, you can make head cheese. If anyone's familiar with head cheese, it's just the whole head cooked really, really, really slowly, and then you take everything off of it, cook the juice down a little bit more, mix it all up with the juice, and pack it in a pan. Let it sit in the refrigerator. That's what head cheese is. Most people think it, you know, they have a, they don't like it, but it's some of the best part of the pig is in that head. I mean, it really is an island state, and there is the complete possibility of being sustainable and really being able to live off the land. But, you know, Hawaii was never meant, Oahu was never meant to hold a million five people, you know? So it, it's, it's now where it's the battle of, do we import more and continue to ship in more food off the mainland? Or do we begin to create an industry of agriculture and sustainability here? It's, it's very much a possibility. And what's great and very exciting is that you have chefs like Ed Kenny, Mark Noguchi, 
Michael's an import from Seattle, but he's running things over at Grand Wailea. You know, Peter, who are really just champions for all things Hawaii, the culture, the food. They go out and they forage for things. They're working with small farmers. And for, as for me, a chef from New York City who's trying to move to Hawaii, that's a really exciting thing for me because it is certainly uh, very natural, organic, um, and there's a huge, I feel like Hawaii is on just like this like cusp of like breaking through and, and going full force and really creating a whole new industry for cuisine. The tour may be coming at a good time. Pigs on Hawaii Island are in need of some good PR. You know, there's a lot of disheartened farmers, not only on the Big Island, but on Oahu too, because yes, um, uh, there's, not a, there's not a whole lot of market for the local heritage pig. And um, so what, what, what Brady wants to do with this, I think, is bring awareness to the feral pig. And the feral pig is, is a total nuisance to everybody concerned. It's a nuisance to the farmer, nuisance to, you know, just the resident that uh, the pigs just tear up everything in sight. They, they, they look for water. So what the islanders have been doing is getting the feral pigs, um, selling them to Kalana Foods or to other ranchers, and then sort of quote unquote domesticating them, raising them, slaughtering them, and turning it into a feral wild pig item on the Big Island. Some farmers are passionate about their pigs, like well-known farmer Lloyd Case. The wild pig is also the third smartest animal in the world. That's why many of the Hawaiian chiefs would eat the brain of the pig, figuring they would get the knowledge from the animal. The wild pig is the only animal left that is chemical free. Everything else that we eat today, we have hormones, we have uh, different uh, medicines that medicated in the, in, in, the, in the animal. The wild pig is still natural. He's big, we, got a, we have a pig from uh, the Case family, Big Island Hogs. The situation goes deeper. The pigs may be a problem to some, but to others, in particular Hawaii's hunting community, the pigs are a valued resource. Hunters bristle at state mandates to eradicate pigs from watersheds. Pigs are ungulates like sheep, goats, and deer, and therefore the Department of Land and Natural Resources plans to eliminate as many of them as possible from valued watersheds. And in the wet forest, the main problem is pigs. And their presence there churns up the, the forest floor, allows the weeds to come in. It's been a contentious issue at public meetings for years. Um, defining introduce as an act of releasing wildlife into a habitat in which is not indigenous. I guess I'm leaning towards if you catch a pig in a trap and you remove it from someone else's property, if you're doing them a favor or whatever, I mean, is that gonna be is that against the law now, as it is? Transport and release, which, which is what the law is regulating. The so if he catches, a, if he catches a, a pig in, a, in my ranch, because I don't want it there, and he takes it five miles down the road to another guy's place and lets it go, he's committed a crime. Yes. If it's not in confinement, when he when it's released ah. onto another person's property. You see how invasive that is? You're talking about taking food off people's dinner tables. Maybe I should come to your house, your house, and take your food off your table tonight and you go hungry, or your kids go hungry. Pigs have been on these islands for a long time now, which gives them cultural importance as well. Desecrating the, our religion, as you destroy our pigs. Unglets, you give them a definition of unglets. How do you define something that is important to our Hawaiian people? We use a sacrifice, we use a ceremony, and you go ahead and do that. Now you also say that the pigs destroy the forest. I have not seen one one uh, proof or, or anything to our public about how the pigs destroy the forest. And, you know, if you, uh, you know, we're in a litigation suit right now against you, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, to call the pua'a that was used in ceremony by my ancestors, I can, I can prove it to you that I have genealogy and records that prove that my ancestors used the pua'a as ceremony for sacrifices for their gods. And you come over here and call it an unglet? And call it the destru destruction to our forest? Can high publicity events like Koshan generate ideas for fostering an industry around the maligned creature? Oh, we're just the baby steps, yeah, baby steps right now. So, you know, like next year, Brady has kind of envisioned a, a, um, a, a feral 
wild hog sausage throwdown. So to celebrate the pig, and the most sustainable way to do just feral pigs is to grind it. Just get the pig, slaughter it, and grind it from head to tail and make a beautiful sausage. So number one, what it does is it takes care of the whole pig. It takes care of the farmer because he doesn't have to worry about selling parts. It takes care of the chef because he doesn't have to worry about selling parts, you know. Start with the pork chop, you know, end up with the loin and then end up with the ham and it's just difficult. It's very difficult. So um, I think it's a great idea. So we'll stay tuned. We need to stop eating commercial pork. We need to consider whole animal uh, butchery and cooking, which is the more responsible way of eating. There is a feral pig problem on this island, and guys like Tom at Kulana Foods are doing the right thing by capturing these feral pigs and then breeding them, finishing them on grain so they become an actual viable product for the chef and culinary industry. Of course, at the Koshan event, there were some impressive dishes being created. All interesting, all interesting. We got, you know, stuff ranging from blood uh, noodles, I mean noodles, a pasta, ramen made from blood, which is Ed Kenny's, uh, to uh, Leanne's who's got a, you know, she touches her dish probably ten times with ten different ingredients for one dish. Uh, Michael Young from Maui who's got a, a, a home style approach. Gary Noguchi is just absolutely crazy with a marshmallow lard cookie. Um, we're featuring some Korean items at uh, uh, Mauna Kea Beach Hotel with uh, kind of a Berkshire mandu with a Simon noodle made from Hilo, um, kimchi in it, and a homemade broth. So it's kind of covers the gamut today.